So do you think people or Turkish Muslims uh, are tolerant to the other members of the faith? Well, the, of course, the ones that we were with and we were introduced to obviously were. And my impression is, though, again, because of the, the way that I was viewed on the street by people that did not know who I was, I would say that there must be in Turkey a, um, um, at least a, a, a large percentage of the people there who are interested in uh, a tolerance, are interested in dialogue, interested in, uh, in, <clears throat> in us being who we are, each of us who we are and uh, to be able to share that and to share the best of what each of us has with the other one. And I would say that that would be what I was experiencing uh, there and, and would hope that, that, that my impression was correct and that a large number of Turkish people do embrace that philosophy. <clears throat> it's, it's going more on that, like the, the culture, the history, the religion, uh, which is in, in action in the whole country of Turkey, uh, what, what was uh, your perception of the whole as, as, as Turkish uh, culture and religion? In its historical context? Yeah. Or, um, well, I was fascinated and uh, or in, very interested in the, the uh, secular, the concept of a secular state in a country that was 97, 98% a uh, Muslim and how that was working uh, together and how that had historically come to be uh, as opposed to uh, the, um, the rest of, of Turkish history. And that um, it impressed me that people there were somehow wanting to make that, that, um, uh, that work uh, of a secular state with a nation that is very religious uh, uh, and among the people, obviously. I I was also, though, struck by the tension or the, con, uh, for my own self, the concerns for how a government can function and, and be s completely separated from religion. I, I, I'd like to study more about that, understand how, how that really can, can work out. In our country, of course, in America, the, the government is supposed to be separated from religion, but somehow it, religion uh, seems to be um, acknowledged and more of, at least on the surface, a more a part of our government and the way they talk and act and, and that we're allowed to talk and act. Uh, that was, was different uh, from a truly secular state that I saw Turkey attempting to uh, not only develop but to uh, live within. So I don't fully understand all that, but uh, it's, it's fascinating that that how that could possibly work. As, as, as thinking of the, the, the hopes for building a world peace, after the trip, would you think that's increased in you? The hope for world peace? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, most definitely. I think that uh, the, the fact that m me finding out that IID exists and that not only does Institute of Interfaith Dialogue exist, but there are other uh, groups who uh, have similar, uh, at least similar in uh, philosophy and desire for uh, tolerance and, and peace. Uh, my um, hope that we can have world peace it has been greatly influenced by this and the expectation raised for it as well. Because before that, uh, before becoming aware of I IID, uh, my general impression was that I didn't see how in the world that Christian people and Muslim people could ever uh, find a place to meet. Uh, there did not seem to be that desire. I know from the standpoint of Christian folks that a lot of times that desire is not there uh, to meet. Uh, but I'd always, my impression of Islam was that there was no desire to meet. Uh, not really as, as people who really entered into an equal uh, um, relationship, both committed to their faith, but both committed to world peace as well. So that uh, really helped me in my understanding and my hope for world peace. So trip uh, really sparked anything uh, in you in doing uh, more in, about interfaith dialogue or, or future activities at 
maybe plans for new things? Mm -hmm. Well, one thing I did, uh, one of my son is a professor at Huntington College in Montgomery, Alabama. And he had lived a year, uh, studied in Israel for a year, doing his doctoral work over there. And uh, the first thing that I did was I went to him and encouraged him to find out who it was around in his area that was involved with IID. I told Sabri about that and asked him to uh, make contact with my son as well so because I wanted him to experience uh, this group coming out of, from Islam that I knew was different from his general impression and what he had experienced in his year in the Middle East. And so that was one step I took immediately. And as a matter of fact, uh, he's going to be going now on on um, IID trip in, in June. I believe it is the latter part of May, 1st of June. And they've invited him and his wife to go. So I'm excited about that. That was a very personal thing for me. And I, I, I hope that will make an impression upon him and uh, his work as a religious professor at a uh, small college in Alabama. I've also begun to... Um, uh, invite other people uh, to at least become aware of what IID is doing. Uh, I, uh, invited them, of course, to the dinner this year. So to the uh, in, uh, the um, that's the second one, I guess, we've had here in Jackson. Invited some people that I know who are in um, uh, either Methodist pastors or people who work within our uh, the Methodist system. Invited them to come to that so that they could. Uh, experience and understand and begin to know this group who was indeed trying to promote uh, uh, this uh, tolerance and, and world peace. So I've taken those two steps and then uh, uh, reading some of the things that have come my way to understand more of the background uh, and uh, where the movement comes from and so forth so that I can in various settings uh, speak positively about that. Also on our staff at the church encouraged one of our staff members who had run across a piece of material on world religions that um, was um, uh, a study that was intended to help people understand uh, uh, at least uh, I think there's four uh, religions that that book embraces and Christianity and Islam being two of those and encouraged him to, to teach that in our church. So we have a group that's going through that class at least opening up this subject of understanding of each other more than we than we typically do. Would like to go back to Turkey? Oh yeah, 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 ready to go in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it, it's a great experience and I feel like that although we were so immersed in it for so much uh, in a short period of time, uh, keeping such a schedule from early morning to late at night was uh, a bit tiring, but I understood the purpose of it, and that therefore we got to experience more than we would have if we had been on a more leisurely schedule. But I would love to go back and spend uh, several weeks or a month uh, in a more leisurely fashion and to more explore some of the places that I saw that, that caught my attention. So I might like to move on to the next section, the mm -hmm. education heard Tulak Glenn's name before or did you read something beforehand before the trip? The, I had heard the name but had not even attempted to um, to read anything or to really know anything about about him at all uh, un until when I became involved and contacted by ID and began to <clears throat> to um, to attend some things uh, with IID. Then I began to be more interested in it. And of course, then uh, some of your volunteers gave me some books to read and, and I began to read a little bit about, but not before that. 